you were on a show called SAS Australia and you were if I'm not mistaken we'll get to it you were in the first season or the celebrity season anyway it says what doesn't kill you makes you um uh, and if i heard that i would never even go anywhere close to <laughs> <laughs> that show it's one of the best shows out there i, I believe like we look, talk about reality tv shows and i've never wanted to be on any other show um i've never never had the urge to but when this came up i was like i definitely want to be on it um it's something i've i've wanted to uh, have a crack at um it's not your typical show it's um you know they they, they film you 24 7 the guys are uh, are genuine they they run a course um yeah they do talk to you in between certain certain parts of of it and they're human beings um but ultimately like is that respect thing if you're if they're talking to you and explaining things to you because they only explain it once they don't repeat you have to be listening you have to be on you have to have that respect um so yeah it's um it is it's probably the one of the most genuine ones out i think survivor maybe like up there as well i've heard some pretty good things about that but yeah i had a heap of <laughs> heap of um offers to go on different shows after that but i was not interested uh, like i said i'm not in it to do it for fame or or for money or anything like that you leave celebrity master chef to simon catch i mean he went well he can cook that, okay. so I think I I wouldn't want to embarrass myself too much. <laughs> like there's there's a there's a limit. Like um I think the physical side of things is something that I'm more prepared to have a crack at. Um I like cooking, but yeah, I'm not not that great to be honest. A steak on the barbie, you know, the standard male um food that I know how to cook. No no poached pear with uh, raspberry coolie and all that nothing none of that. Is that what you do? You're pretty impressive. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> I've nah. tried. I, I've given it a go. It doesn't look anything like it should, but you know, and I don't think the wife likes to take a risk with it, so I eat it myself. But yeah, I gave some. I gave it a go not longer. I did like this Korean style, uh, double deep fried chicken thing, and mm. yeah, I, I, it was okay, but it was very very sweet. Um, so yeah, I won't be doing that again. About the SAS trainers, look, I mean, when you watch it on TV, uh, they come across as being really rude and cutthroat. But you have to also realize it is a TV show, right? Yes, it is reality. It is about the SAS and training, but it's still a TV show. So a lot of what we see or the way they interact with you guys, that's just more for the camera, right? They're not all the time like that. Yeah, it still is a show. Um. but i think they have to 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 play it up a little bit for show but there was um mm. i guess there was a few few people on there that really pushed their buttons um and they would talk back a lot and um i guess that sells you know that sells people it gives ratings um but yeah, yeah like i said at the start the the, the sas guys they they talk to us and they're like this is this is not a joke this is for real mm. for them like this is a course and that's how i took it i took it as a i'm doing a, a genuine course here and i think they run it really well i think uh yes there is elements of of tv where how they cut things i guess um it's not all in order um so yeah, there's definitely things that come up that i think just for for tv like the yeah, build up of, of it yeah yeah so yeah everything else was genuine like the guys were like if if you if you stuffed up like there was that that was their genuine reactions like hmm. or if you you know they're, they're trying to test you like they test your mental and how you react to thing uh things how you get back up cuz you're all going to fail at at some point during it like it's not you're not there to to be perfect um it's how it's how you you react to things and how you um you can see you can see with a lot of contestants on there how much stronger they got you know that that part of it is is it was absolutely outstanding so um Yeah like it's 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 one of the better ones out there I believe um from a reality TV show point of view. It might sound like a silly question but what the cricket fans like, did they know Yeah it will be if uh, it's Of course you. it is most of them are <laughs> <laughs> but like were the cricket fans did they know a lot about your career and what you'd done? Uh were they the Yeah the SAS the guys the trainers the trainers yeah Um I think so I don't I don't really know I know that um like speaking to them afterwards that um 
yeah, they'd made a few comments. So I think they had seen me sort of beat their English up. So they'd made a, a few comments about that um, afterwards. But during it, like they don't, mm. yeah, they don't, they don't care. It's just you're you're an individual. You're that person. Your number, whatever number you are, um, it's about testing you and seeing what you're made of. There's no uh, looking after anyone on there. Like it's, it, it honestly is. There's it's just you're a number. And that's how yeah. you want to be treated on there as well. That's that's what we signed up for. I think people watching sometimes thought it got taken a bit too far with certain things. But mm. um, even with my fight against Merrick Watts, they call it milling. So milling is like in the army. I don't know if they do it in the other forces or not, but it's um, it's about facing fear. It's about facing someone punching at you. You're not allowed to duck. You're not allowed to block. You just have to throw punches until you're being told to stop. And it seems like it's it's crazy, but um, I totally get the whole the whole idea of it. I, I stopped when I knocked Merrick Merrick down. I hit him to the ground and I stopped. So that was just my natural reaction. But I got told off at the end of that because it's um you know like you don't stop when it's in war. So I, I get that. Like that's the whole that was the whole idea of yeah. what the show was about. So. And look, they understand, like our. I guess they understand, like what our backgrounds are. Like we're not, we're not. Like I said, we're not actually going to go um, try out for the SAS or anything like that. But um, yeah, we're, we're there to, to experience what they go through. But what did it feel like? I have to ask you. Know it's been two years when you knocked him, knocked him down. <laughs> uh, I mean, you felt a few, you know, batters with, with with your bouncers, but to knock someone down with your bare hands. Uh, we had some pretty pretty big gloves on and some headgear, but um, I don't know. I, I think in that moment, I was just I was doing whatever I needed to do to survive. Hmm. That's how I felt. So it wasn't even. I think it's what I drew out of me. It was more the anger I had inside of me. I was drawing out. It wasn't even about that person in front of me. Hmm. It was really strange. It was a strange feeling. And and like I said, I knocked him down and I sort of hesitated. And Aunt Milton was the referee and said, did I tell you to stop? Um, maybe not so friendly, but it was... And I went to go and punch him again while he was on the ground. And then he told me to stop. And that's when he spoke to me about, yeah, what the, you're trying, they're trying to achieve out of, out of that drill. Um, but like for me, yeah, I felt like, um, yeah, I was just in that moment. And I felt like I was almost fighting myself in some ways. It's it, uh, so... And the fact that, like, you know, the whole being talked down to, uh, it doesn't happen much in sport. Maybe occasionally some coaches, I'm sure you went. Yeah, I felt it does, that. doesn't it? You see it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not Probably. talking about any particular coaches on this show, but <laughs> uh, what was that like? I mean, just, does it take some getting used to being spoken to in that fashion? Uh, nah, used to it. <laughs> We did our <laughs> we did our camp in 2006 with the Aussie team, so oh, right. um, we'd had that experience already uh, in some ways, not quite that intense, but I mean well, it was pretty intense, but for a shorter period of time. And just just going back to the the, the fight, uh, you spoke about it at some level. It was like you fighting uh, with with yourself. Was it almost an out of body experience? Like uh, yeah, now when you think yeah. yeah, yeah, it was. To be honest, it felt like that. Um, yeah, I definitely felt like it was a bit of an out-of-body experience in some ways. Um, like you don't, I didn't see, I didn't really see Merrick in front of me. It was just more that you sort of see a bit of uh, red mist, I guess. <laughs> um, and you're just doing what you've been told to do. It's almost like you're, you're a bit robotic in some ways. But yeah, I, I just remember, yeah, just that feeling of um, just throwing punches. Um, and then when I knocked him down, I thought that was it, but... Yeah, it's, it's 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 quite interesting. Uh, the whole concept of it all was, um, I totally get get it all. Like I understand, and it was great to experience it. Do you think you were tapping into a, a side of you that you didn't know? You spoke about a, you know kind of facing your anger or dealing with your anger while while you were doing it. Um, did do you think you tapped into that side of you, a side of you you didn't know maybe existed or you hadn't in a long time? Oh, it's it's I don't know maybe I think yeah I've I've been able to reflect on a few different things since that that sort of um, that session that we had there that fight and I look at 
some of the incidents that have happened in my cricket career where I've gone after certain players and and I actually think that the reason I did go after certain players was more out of my frustration of what was going on on the inside for me. I think I have mentioned this a few times now, but yeah, it, it was more how I was feeling and it's my frustrations and then I take it out on whoever was in front of me, whichever batsman. Um, there was definitely some batsmen that I, I went after in a certain way mm. uh, because I knew that you know they struggled with this, you know getting forward on the front foot and you'd sort of have a chat to them about it. But any time I think I let my emotions get the better of me, I think that was more to do with myself. Mm. Um, that's something that I've definitely realized over the last couple of years yeah that that that's fascinating right i mean you mm. kind of uh, that's the beauty of doing something like like this like this podcast is yeah uh, you looking back at some of the things you did on and off the field uh, because you do it without realizing right even the yeah. fight you're speaking about and in the moment you're not thinking about all these things like why how am i feeling why am i doing this but it's when you get to reflect on it yeah. um and, and like you said i mean there were times you you were a menacing fast bowler. Yeah, I mean, you kind of, you know, ran through opposition sides. You kind of uh, terrorized a few batters. But oftentimes, you were kind of dealing with, with, with your own terror. Like, you know, you are dealing with your own, um, at some yeah. level, insecurities. Yeah, uh, I think that's your spot on. Like, And don't get me wrong, there was times I said like it, it, that I enjoyed that sort of battle out in the middle and it was it was great. And... You'd have that one-on-one -on -one with with a with a batsman and uh, that competitive side, and 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 it, the emotions didn't get in the way of it. And then there was the other times when I look back and I almost feel a little bit embarrassed at times where I, I felt like my emotions got uh, the better of me, and it was definitely more about myself and um, just didn't know that was the I guess my way of dealing with it was out in the field and and um, trying to be aggressive and and be intimidating and things like that so um yeah it's 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 great to be able to reflect on those things and and something that yeah we've spoken about off air before that you know it'd be great to be able to talk about these things because it's something that um you, you don't really talk about in, in normal interviews that you do or it's always about um the players that are out there in the field or um if you're in a team situation it's about um what the team's doing or your performance on that day you got a five for so yeah it's great to be able to do a podcast and, and to be able to open up about those things and, and have i think good conversations and did it take you a while to sit down and uh watch the difficult parts of the show mitch i mean there's one thing looking at i mean you know watching yourself punch people or you know carry a log but to see yourself cry i mean did it take you a while to be okay with just seeing yourself do that um, I was really, really nervous about that coming up on TV. Um, and I didn't think I was going to be able to watch it. I said to Jess, I said, I don't think I can watch this, this part because I think it's just going to bring back those memories mm -hmm. and I'm going to, yeah, feel like shit. So, um, but I, I, I made myself watch it and, um, yeah, I, I I don't know. Like I I can't remember exactly how I felt. I think I was okay with it, and like I said the response afterwards was what really sort of I think surprised me and 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 sort of reassured me. I guess in some ways that um, being open and honest was a was a good thing. So yeah, definitely quite nervous leading into it. I think I lost a little bit of sleep the, the couple of days leading in. Um, I can't remember if we had some friends over. I had friends over for the first, first um, mm. the opening one. I'm not sure if we had. I think I might have had a couple of friends over for the, for the last one. But, uh, no, I didn't actually. I, I lie. I was just at home and it was just Jess and I. So, um, But yeah, that was, you know, when I think about it and I, and I go, this is going out to air and, and friends and family are going to see this that I haven't, you know, really spoken to this kind of stuff about. There'd been a couple of people, but yeah, it was, um, I guess it was quite scary at the time, but yeah, um, yeah, really happy that I was able to to do it. When you did watch it, did it bring back some bad memories or did it bring back yeah. some emotions? Well, watching watching that, yeah, definitely brought back some, some emotion and some of the memories. So 
that's another reason why I didn't really want to watch it because I felt like mm. I'd been through it and I didn't need to relive it. But yeah, no, it was all good in the end um, once I got through it. And like having a, a very supportive wife in, in Jess and, and what she's um, she's had to deal with, with my rubbish. Um, but she's always been very understanding and um, you're very helpful uh, through the situations that I've gone through. And um, yeah, I have a lot to thank and a lot to... Yeah, just I just thank her a lot for for everything that she's done. Um, so yeah, she's just um, she just gets on with life and she's very positive and always keeps herself busy and um, is always there for me. And um, I couldn't couldn't uh, ask for a better person to have by my side. Something you you touched on uh, a while earlier uh, about you know what these antidepressants did to you, the whole flatlining. Um, and it is, you know, what you you know, a few years older than me, and we, when we were being brought up, uh, especially as men, uh, to not show your emotions was considered cool, right? You you like you know you were looked at as being strong and uh, as someone who's like oh, nothing affects you. A- and as both of us know now, having been married for quite a while, um, it it actually you know ha- has drawbacks in in any relationship yeah. but yeah. especially with your wife where uh, you have to show some emotion i mean you have to kind of express your vulnerability otherwise well, you yeah. are almost not doing your just doing it just in well, life exactly you have to show and you have to it's communication <laughs> that's that's the big one like it's always talked about in relationships for relationships to work you have to have communication and that's where i was you know i was just bottling everything up and and not talking about how i was feeling and i just thought i didn't want to burden jess with it but ultimately it was doing worse when I mean, you, you you push them push the loved ones away uh and you're making things worse by not explaining to them how you're feeling or what you're going through so then they don't understand and then they're thinking what the hell do you do like what how do we help like so you, you, yeah it's it's much better to be able to be open and and honest when, with how you're feeling. I've uh, the last little bit for me is, is I've been able to, um, yeah, be able to be so much more open and honest about how my feelings are, and it's actually been quite a a, a nice uh, feeling for me. And Jess has even said that she understands me a lot better and how I operate. Like she she gets me a lot more now, so um, that can only strengthen a relationship. So it's um. Yeah, it's really important to to sort of be able to. And I, I don't. Know, what new age kids these days are are, are probably maybe going to be a bit more open. I hope uh, be able to talk about how they're feeling and and not go through so much um, of the bad stuff. Feel like they have to, you know, bottle it up or not communicate it. Um, it's definitely yeah, like you said, we we definitely went through that growing up. We just get on with it. Um, there's some good things about just getting on with it as well. You build some resilience, but there's also drawbacks to it, like you say. But I think that communication thing is definitely something I've, I've um, become better at. Um, still working on it, but um, yeah. <laughs> I know. Look, till the time you you've had the realization that you need to work on it and uh, you need to get better at it, I think you're already on the on the right path, right? And yeah. I, I guess it especially for. Um, cricketers and, and maybe even in my profession where we spend so much time away from home uh, I think it's even more important when you do come home that you kind of you know there's al- already that kind of not distance but space between you and your partner because you're not physically there and then when you are physically there and then to be uh, to use a cliche emotionally unavailable it, it just makes things things harder for them like you know which is yeah. unfair I can tell you now I uh, I was a little bit nervous um, coming to the Legends League just because I felt like it was going back into that old um, deep place again of um, going back to your room and and being alone in your room um, and falling back into bad habits. Um, So I was really concerned about coming over for for those reasons. I thought maybe it's it's going to be a bit of a backward step for me. because I felt like, yeah, th- those were tough days for me when, you know, you'd, you'd have a bad day in the field or, or whatever, and come back to your room and start reading things and and not go and socialise with the boys and be around the, the lads. So 
Um, yeah, I've, I've really sort of got a different approach this time. And um, I think just because I'm probably enjoying the cricket a lot more because it's not so, it's not professional. It's semi-professional, but, um, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm not, not playing for sheep stations here and um, I can come back to my room and, and relax if I need to relax or go and catch up with a few of the uh, yeah. past players, which I've been doing, um, you know, have a good long breakfast with the boys and then catch up for, for an afternoon like tea or coffee or, or whatever, uh, have a good chat, just... And it's quite quite amazing, actually. We we talking to a few of the boys that all we all went through, all all going through similar things. Um, you know, guys are struggling with that lack of routine, the change of routine uh, for some. You know, some got some guys are doing full time work. Um, so yeah, it's it, everyone is going through very similar similar things, and um, yeah, I think we can all help each other out. We've it's it's been quite quite amazing that guys have been so open about it as well so there's already been a bit of a shift which is good um so hopefully that continues on and um and throughout the, this tournament i can keep um keep those uh, those lines open of communication with with the lads and um yeah you know, hopefully improve prove things and but yeah that was definitely coming over here was one of my concerns of yeah falling back into um, you know, that depressive state and um, not enjoying it but I've got a different mindset this time so hopefully uh, I can manage through it I'm sure I will I feel I feel much better anyway so and I, I know like you said there is nothing else like the SAS but another reality show comes calling one with maybe more physical challenges will Mitchell Johnson take it on or he's had enough uh, well I did say I wouldn't do any other shows and 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 like the money side of it, like doesn't really interest me. I'm not there for the fame, but I guess if someone chucked a, a, a huge amount of money in, I, I, I may consider. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's um, I am more of a private person, and I don't think that I need to be putting myself out on a show. Um, I've I've built my profile. I I, I don't need to be current. Um, some people feel like they need to be current all the time. Um, I definitely don't feel like I need to be current. Like, I don't know. I'm just, I just want to enjoy my life. And um, that's great that, like I said, we, that we're able to do this podcast and, and talk about things. And, but yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm not too sure. Maybe, maybe right price. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Um, I, it's just one of those things though. Like, I, I just, I just want to live my life. Honestly, I just want to be relaxed and, um, do things with the, with the family and um, but yeah we'll see and well, till the time there are snakes in your room in real life why why get on any reality TV <laughs> shows anyway right <laughs> there could've are, d- I could have done uh, one here definitely <laughs> exactly where were you the coming snake you charmer. just pictures I, oh yeah there you go Mitchell Johnson the snake charmer yeah that sounds so, sus <laughs> it doesn't at all but what does sound very good is the mid johnson show thank you again for your honesty and being so open uh i'm i'm, I'm sure there is not just uh, uh a lot to learn about you but a lot that people can take away you know listening to you talk about just feeling emotions and feelings like everybody else yeah no it's um it's good to be able to be so open and talk about it and thanks again brat for uh having a good chat you've been loving i've been loving your long locks again the flowing locks. Uh, you don't have an answer here. for that, do you? <laughs> nah, I mean, I get very worried every time you start, speak about my long locks, you bring the scissors out. So when you do, I get a little worried. What, what sort of um, brush do you use, mate? Is it like, um, like is it a specially made, uh, it's made from horse hair or something like that, the brush with <laughs> that, um, what's that movie? It's got Will Farrell in it. Uh, it's the skating one. And he's got like this specially made like brush and it's like it's so hilarious that just reminds me of you mate anyway <laughs> well yeah um, maybe we have the same uh, uh yeah the same comic timing will fell and i, I think <laughs> but <laughs> man maybe speaking of timing maybe that is the cue for yeah. us to say goodbye I but think it is now nah, thank you so much and uh yeah we'll see you we'll next see week you later.